So our next presentation is a double act. Um, I met Stuart oh, about five hours ago, <laughs> but I'm already very impressed. Um, he's been a maths teacher for 25 years, uh, taught at five very different schools, uh, Bachelor of Arts, Diploma of Education from Macquarie University, Graduate Certificate of Education from the University of Canberra. He's been a head of department for 14 years, and he's also currently helping train our pre-service maths teachers here at the University of Sydney, and he's led numerous workshops and variety of organisations. His um, co-presenter, Norden Zuma, probably doesn't need an introduction. Um, he's currently the head teacher at North Sydney Boys High, but was at Randwick Girls High, and um, changed fields after having worked for 20 years as a software developer with Ticket Tech. Oh, have some bones to pick with you. Um, <laughs> But he was inspired by Robin Williams. Now, I think that's not the comedian Robin Williams, but the science presenter on Radio National. Thank you, boys. Thank you, Leon. Yes, uh, I'm Stuart and, you know, Norton, and we should also acknowledge the work of Karen, uh, who uh, helped us greatly getting ready for this little presentation. Okay, just bear with me for a second. And I need to turn that on. That would be helpful, I think. Okay. Right, as uh, Leon said, I've, I've been a teacher for a long time, 25 years in schools. I've, for the last few years, uh, I've been wearing many different hats. And one of those hats takes me to those towns in the green rectangles. I've been there 47 times now, to one of those towns, and met over 1,200 teachers from places even Lightning Ridge. And uh, I have a lovely time doing that. Uh, as a result of uh, conversations I've had, with those people in my travels, I uh, spoke to Mansour and, and we put together a survey which went out at the end of last year. And we were pleasantly surprised to receive over a thousand responses to that survey. And we spent many hours afterwards uh, discussing, analysing the data and writing up a 26 page report which you probably received last week by email. If not, it's on the Mansour website. Um, the, Australian the Australian Association of Mathematics Teachers is now recommending similar surveys to associations all over Australia. So, our intention in the next 9.25 minutes is to, <laughs> is to tell you uh, a little bit about what we wanted to know. A, bit, a little bit of who and a little bit of what and a little bit of why is this so. Um, I should mention before we get too carried away, that Norden found this lovely little icon, and when you see that, it distinguishes, kind of distinguishes between what we know and what we found, and that little icon is our personal views on certain things. Right. So, in my time as a mathematics teacher, I was lucky. When I started teaching in 86, there was a massive shortage of mathematics teachers, and it just seems to get worse. Um, Various things have been tried. Uh, that is our new definition of what an out-of-field teacher is. And I'm sure some of you have met out-of-field teachers in your schools already. I've met several hundred of them. Various things have been tried to address this situation. And it would be lovely if every student had a fully qualified secondary mathematics teacher. But it probably never did happen. And it's certainly not happening at the moment. Um, therefore, Mansour has recently set what we believe to be a reasonable benchmark, and that would be that 80% of lessons in Year 7, 8, 9 and 10 should be, at least 80%, should be delivered by qualified secondary mathematics teachers. But as you, might, you will have seen if you've read the report, in some parts of New South Wales, we are a long way below that benchmark. Alarmingly so especially in the regional areas and the outer suburbs of Sydney. This one surprised me and kind of led to the question I asked Marilyn earlier today about the out-of-field teachers, because what I have discovered in working with them is that they actually do bring great qualities. Thank you. They bring great qualities from their other subject areas and they bring good pedagogy. What they're telling me is that the current retraining courses that are available are not necessarily right for them. And so Mansour, uh, Mansour has recommended here that there should be two different types of retraining course, a type A and a type B. Currently we have type B, 
and for some people it's just out of the question and it's not really what they want. We're recommending that there should be a type A course that really focuses on nuts and bolts of how to teach algebra to year seven and how to teach trigonometry to year nine and how to do it well. That's, what, that's one of our recommendations. Um, okay, moving right along. Norman, it's me. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so which mathematics courses are New South Wales students choosing? Uh, the first thing we did was we actually asked our teachers to tell us. And here's the data. And the thing that really came out to us is there is a big problem in the regions, in the New South Wales regions. Um, and remember, this is just reported data from our teachers. Um, but effectively, what we're seeing is that the extension courses are dying, if not dead, in regional New South Wales, which is very worrying. It's an equity issue, I would argue. Um, we think there's a serious problem. I should say there is no public <coughs> publicly available official data on regional participation. For Stuart and I, this is a big concern. This data is there, but it's not being made publicly available. And we believe by having it publicly available, it would actually expose this issue and give it more prominence. Um, what is publicly available is the overall participation in the courses. Um, and so here's the chart uh, that we've made, general two unit only, three unit and four units. We have, however, done something different, which you do not see in most presentations. We have pulled out in the two unit, in the mathematics two unit, we've pulled out the students who are also doing extension one. So each of these lines, a student is counted only once. And we think this is something really important. For us, the data didn't shine until we actually separated out the cohorts. This is very dramatically showing the drop in two units. Whereas if you just looked at the top line two unit figure, which includes the extension one students, you're not going to see that big dip because they're at it. So we would argue that when we look at this data, people should be looking at it by separating it into the different cohorts of students rather than just the raw numbers. First, some really good news. There are lots and lots of students graduating with calculus. There are 20,000 year 12 students every year completing calculus. We're doing a great job. We're producing loads of students. The question is, where are they going? We're hearing from the universities that students are coming to university without calculus, without STEM courses, or without what they need for a STEM course. But we're saying they're there. So they're not clearly not going into the courses where people want them to go to. Um, our opinion, we don't think enough focus is being placed on this question. There's a lot of talk about what's happening about who's not doing two unit. But for us, a very interesting question is, what are these people who we are spending all this effort doing calculus teaching, why aren't they doing the courses that are struggling for people? In all the community response to our report, nobody focused on this question. For us, it's a smoking gun question. It's a challenging question. Why aren't those students in your extension one, extension two classes, why are they not going into pure science? Why are more of them not going into engineering? My question to you is, new teachers in particular, what can you do to encourage more of those students to go into the STEM courses? <coughs> okay, so more good news. Extension one, extension two are relatively stable, as Neville pointed out to us. You can see those lines, of, you know, some variation, but they're basically stable. So the top end is healthy. But, as you can see, a very worrying decline. We have lost 3,700 two-unit students every year. Well, that's where we're at now. We're 3,700 students less. Can you imagine what that looks like, 3,700 less students? How many high schools worth of students is that? That's serious. <coughs> okay, we have a hypothesis, which is that students who could do two-unit are choosing general or no maths. Okay, you want me to do that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we asked our teachers, what do you think? Are a substantial, we gave them a statement. In recent years, a substantial percentage of students who could do it are not doing it. 51% of our, oh yeah, I'm still doing this. 51% of our respondents 
said they thought it was true. Only 34% disagreed. We asked for their reasons. This was probably the biggest work in our survey, was to actually collect all these test responses. And the reasons, if we summarise them, desire to optimise HSC and ATAR, the difficulty of the two unit course, and the fact that others, the students are attracted to other courses, which was a code word we didn't want to insult our audience to say many students find maths boring. Okay, so some more details. Here's the types of uh, responses to do with the HSC and the ATAR. Let me read them for a second. Now notice that these are views, these are teachers' views. They're not necessarily facts, but they're the views of the teachers. The teachers believe that students are making selections to do general because of the ATAR. We think students and parents also share these views. Whether they're correct or not, they are influencing students. So that's what we need to find out. Um, here's a group of reasons. Why did I circle some of them read? Ideas? They're things we can do something about. We can do something about them today. Students don't <coughs> like maths, they don't enjoy them. They had inadequate experiences in K-12. Those are things that we can do. Here's another whole bunch. Both of them, things that we can do. Other subjects are more appealing. Advice from teachers, another big one that uh, John is saying and Neville, give the right advice to students. 40% of all the reasons that we got are things that you can do something about. So for me, a very important message from this is, yes, there are other structural issues that we may be concerned about, but there's a lot that us as teachers can do. Quality teaching matters, and it will make a difference in student participation. Just about out of time. Yep, you've got about two more slides. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Hand up if you've been quizzed by a student. Should I drop to you? I'm doing two unit. It's really hard. Should I drop it or should I keep going? Hand up if you've been quizzed at that. Oh, lots of people. It's a tough question to answer, is it not? And then the toughest thing was I would, I would try and convince them to stay, but they would say, it's killing my other subjects. How do you answer that? Uh, anyway, tough questions. Look, one of the conversations that's going on now is about uh, the general and the two unit. And when I, when I was a boy, <laughs> pre-2001, pre we, at the back of this book there was lots of stats and then that was suppressed and, and in the absence of all that information, conversations happen and, and lately there's been a conversation about the comparison of general and two unit. And, I, and I'm here to tell you that uh, here we've got a bunch of students doing general and uh, what, I'm, what people are telling us is that there are some very capable students doing general now who wouldn't have been there 20 years ago, 15 years ago, even 10 years ago. And that's making Neville's job incredibly difficult. Um, one thing that's going on is people are going back to the very last school certificate test. And you can see here, I think, that the general students are actually getting some, they are getting somewhat of an advantage, especially these ones up the top end, in the top 10% of that pool, are getting some advantage in that ATAR calculation. <laughs> These are the conversations that are happening at the moment. Um, and and the, the, the candidature has changed. Anyhow, just a quick thing, back in 1997, um, Barry McGaw actually recommended that there should be two ATARs. An ATAR for people who are heading towards a humanities future and an ATAR for people who are heading towards a STEM future. And so maybe that's time to go back to that little future. And uh, at the time the New South Wales government decided we won't do anything about this yet at this stage, but maybe it's time you guys all join this conversation and we started thinking about the possibility of two separate indices. Yeah, we'd better stop there. <laughs> we'll, leave, we'll leave that one there because Norden, no, not that one, we'll leave that one there. Norden believes there are things that we can all do. We've all got access to those kids. There are things we can do. We will stop. Thank you. <laughs>